Just two years ago, Baijus was valued at $22 billion. It was the biggest edutech startup, not just in India, but also the world. It had brand ambassadors like Shah Rukh Khan and Lionel Messi. It sponsored the Indian cricket team. It sponsored the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Its founder, Baiju Ravindra, was a blue-eyed boy of the Indian startup industry. Cut to today, two years later, the valuation has dropped 99%. And a group of the shareholders are now in a meeting to remove Baiju Ravindra, his wife and his brother from the board. Another group of shareholders have actually approached the National Company Law Tribunal, accusing them of mismanagement and oppression. What happened to this flourishing startup that was once the darling of the investors? Let's take a look at this massive story. Well, to begin with, to understand where all of this came from, we have to understand where Baju Ravindra came from, the founder. Now, he was the son of school teachers, a physics teacher and a mathematics teacher in Arakori village in Kunur in Kerala. Now, he was apparently brilliant. He was an engineering graduate and he started teaching maths to some of his friends who wanted to take the cat to do their MBA. He was not personally interested in taking the cat himself, but everyone he helped apparently did really well. Word spread and soon from just friends and friends of friends, he started making this a full-time job. He went from teaching a few friends to filling entire auditoriums because he was simply that good at it. He then started a company called Think and Learn back in 2011. Now, it began to offer focused training to students for board examinations, especially students from the 8th to the 10th who were doing entrances after the 10th, and then expanded to NEAT and CAT and IIS and also GRE and GMAT. Word spread of how brilliant he was and his incredible success rate. By 2018, he had 50 million subscribers to his edutech firm and he became a unicorn around much fanfare. The real dream run was between 2015 and 2021. The first investment came from RN Capital, which was run by Mohandas Pai back in 2013, because word spread around Manipal University, where Mohandas Pai is invested, that the students of Manipal University were rushing to this one particular class. When they made some phone calls to find out who that class was conducted by, it turned out it was by Jura Vindran. By Jura Vindran then got his first investment from Mohandas Pai. Now, in 2016, there was another massive investment that came in, this time from Mark Zuckerberg. Baijus had gotten many rounds of funding, but really the big one after Sequoia, Irwin Capital and Safina Group came from Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan's firm called the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, which actually gave them $50 million in a round. The startup value was now, at the end of this round, $462 million. The next big milestone was a valuation of $10 billion. This happened in the middle of 2020. The company became the blue-eyed startup for marquee foreign investors, which in turn made it the country's most valued, the second most valued startup in India, second to Paytm. Now, if you want to know what happened to Paytm, there's another video we've just recently put up. You can take a look at what happened to that startup. And now we're talking about the number two startup in the country, which is Bejus. A U.S. firm called Bond invested an undisclosed amount within just nine years of existence. The edutech startup was now valued at a headline grabbing ten and a half billion dollars. There was a flurry of investments that came in just as the pandemic began, because you'll remember when the pandemic began, all the students of our country were suddenly online and there were a few online businesses that had mastered edutech as a system. Bejus was the front runner in all of that. By 2019, the company had 35 million registered students of which 2.8 million were paid subscribers. The numbers expanded substantially during the COVID-19 pandemic as students turned to online classes more and more. Let me take you through how those numbers grew. The numbers nearly doubled from the first year of the pandemic where it was 4.2 million. It became 115 million registered users by 2022. That's when the big money was raised. But what did they use the big money for? 
Well, first of all, marketing and of course the uh, big sponsorships and the big stars that they signed on between FY16 and FY22, which was just seven years, the company spent 8,029 crore rupees in advertising alone. Roughly 69% of its operating revenue of that time actually went in marketing. Now, its marketing profile included, like I told you, Shah Rukh Khan, who was roped in in 2017 with an annual fee of 4 crore rupees per year. When Oppo existed, it's a deal to sponsor the Indian cricket team. Bajus jumped in. Now, this was an opportunity it picked up in 2019. And it was paying the BCCI roughly about 4.6 crore rupees a year for each bilateral match in India and 1.56 crore rupees for each international match. Now, lavish marketing also involves sponsoring the Indian cricket team, the Qatar World Cup, which costed about 30 to 40 million dollars from what we understand signing football legend lionel messi uh, for three years for five to seven million annually and of course big acquisitions now that money was also spent as baiju's went up buying out other companies in the space 2.6 billion spent on acquiring other edutech startup companies there was akash educational which was a chain of physical coaching centers for close to 1 billion dollars a more controversial acquisition was white hat junior for 300 million also, an acquisition of a company called Topper for $150 million and US-based Osmo and a reading platform called Epic for $500 million and $120 million. They were also, in spite of the, in the money that uh, the company raised, they also took a massive loan, a massive loan of $1.2 billion that it took from a group of overseas investors. Now, this was not a normal bank loan like you and I will take where we will pay EMIs. Uh, this was what is called a term loan B, which is, uh, you know, the, the basis of this loan is a little different, where basically they take a loan, uh, they pay the interest and the total principal towards the end of the term, and they don't have to pay monthly payments. What they have to do instead is play a small percentage of that interest uh, on a regular basis. And the interest was pretty low at five and a half percent compared to what you and I would pay on a loan right now. So it seemed like a really good loan, but here there was a company that was spending a large amount of money that had also taken this massive loan, uh, was growing tremendously during the pandemic, and then the pandemic ended and the music stopped. To begin with, parents. It started with complaining parents. Disgruntled parents began alleging that the company, its aggressive sales pitch, had misled them. They alleged that Baiju's had fed into the insecurity of Indian parents, that their students or their children would not do well. And with incessant cold calls and sales pitches, they forced them to actually uh, sign up to Baiju's by telling them things like their children would never do well if they don't sign up. In fact, BBC did a story about this where it spoke to parents who said that the services were promised on one-on-one -on -one tutoring and assigning a mentor to assess the child's progress. None of this ever really materialized and parents started demanding refunds. Context News did a report that said Baiju's would send their agents door to door, salespeople who would go into houses of low income families and pressure parents into buying courses, many times sending them into debt. Apparently, these salespeople said things like, your daughter will be poor like you if you don't take this course, so you should be ashamed of yourself for stopping her from succeeding in life. Accordingly, parents were coerced um, into taking up these courses. The National Protection of Child Rights got involved and conducted an investigation into the company where it alleged at the end that the company actually bought data like phone numbers of parents and parents with small children to coerce them into buying courses. And all this led by Jews uh, promising that it will stop exploiting families and low-income families specifically into buying its courses. In countless different cases that were filed in consumer courts across the country, Baiju's was ordered to pay damages to customers in disputes related to refunds and deficiencies in services. BBC in its report also notes that sales executives were under immense pressure to meet completely unrealistic sales targets, that they were working 12 to 15 hours a day trying to get more and more people to sign up for these courses. The second set of unhappy people 
were investors. They were unhappy with the way this giant company was being run. Apparently, it had no full-time CFO uh, for a company of this size. Concerns were made worse. Begin physical classrooms started to open up and finances started dwindling. Now, the lack of CFO also meant the company was defaulting and submitting its financial statements in the year 2020 to 2021, despite the government-sanctioned extension thanks to the pandemic. Baidu's also struggled in releasing its audited accounts for three years in a row. And when finally those accounts were in fact released, the numbers were deeply problematic. Independent auditor Deloitte quit in 2023 after refusing to sign off on the company's financials saying that they were dodgy the company hired a cfo in april 2023 ajay goel who came in from the vedanta group but he quit in just six months also problems were starting to mount the next thing that happened was the revenue dropped now when baiju's finally released its audited statements like i told you they were big problems they showed a loss of 45 billion rupees in their books. Now, Baiju said the problem with this was accounting practices, but everybody pointed out to the massive marketing spends that they had spent a lot of their money on. Finshots had actually said Baiju had calculated some of its operating expenses like salaries and marketing actually as asset building in order to improve its PNL, and this became the next problem. So, for example, according to FinTech, in March 2020, its total salary expenses of about 900 crore rupees, the company showed a little over 500 crore rupees as intangible assets in their balance sheet, and it showed the remaining 420 crore rupees actually as salaries in the profit and loss account. So it was trying to capitalize this expense, but that didn't work, and it actually made things a lot worse for the company. Now, let's go back to that shopping spree where it went out and bought a lot of smaller companies. That really paved the way for the downfall. White Hat Jr. and Osmo accounted for nearly 45% of the losses of FY22. The only asset that was really performing was Akash, which was the physical classes. White Hat Jr. was a spectacular spectacularly bad buy for this company and if you want to know why take a look at the uh, this one interview that i did with the founder of white hat junior karan bajaj three years ago it's sort of self-explanatory if you watch all of it it was a coding platform that has several problems with misleading marketing the next angry guy was bcci the company renewed its cricket sponsorship in 2022 at a 10 bump up but it didn't have the money to pay. And so then that started to unravel. It attempted to wiggle out of that deal early, but the BCCI would have none of it. The BCCI actually took Baiju's to the National Company Law Tribunal in November, claiming that it was owed 160 crore rupees in dues. Finally, the creditors who had given that massive loan of $1.2 billion dollars they got angry next. Now, Baiju's typically had about five or six years to repay the amount, but as the company's crumbling finances became public, the original lenders began trading that loan on the market, which is what it was allowed to do. And by September 2022, the loan was trading at a 30% discount to its value. In May last year, the lenders took Baiju's to court in the U.S., in June, Baiju's countersued the lenders, saying that their actions were predatory. Now, even though Baiju's offered to pay back that entire amount, those legal battles continue and are unresolved. In January this year, 80% of the lenders who were part of that $1.2 billion loan filed insolvency on the NCLT Bangalore against the company. They say the issues of this company are self-inflicted by the management and they said the Baiju's management had no intention or ability to honor the terms of the loans. Then came the angry employees. In late 2022, the company had already let go of more than 2,500 employees. In most recent job cuts came in June 2023, where they let go of another 500 to 1,000 employees. Now, reports say they weren't able to pay salaries. They weren't able to meet their FNF demands of the, of the employees that they had let go of. They began then starting to sell their assets. Now, they tried to sell Great Learning and Epic. They were looking for about $600 million, but it was difficult to find a buyer. Uh, it also put its three-year deal with Messi on hold earlier this month, only about a year after it signed that deal. Finally, the regulator 
the enforcement directorate has now gotten involved it has its eyes on ravindran in connection with an investigation where it's looking at foreign exchange uh, violations of close to 9300 crore rupees it's issued a lookout notice against ravindra this week which means he will not be able to travel outside the country the agency is looking into the foreign investments the foreign remittances the overseas investments that have allegedly caused losses to the exchequer now in april last year the office premises and ravindra's home was actually raided or searched by the ed bloomberg reported that while the search was on he was in dubai and he apparently broke down and cried when defending his company to investors things have been looking increasingly dire in november this year by just ravindra himself apparently took a loan against his homes and his property to pay employee salaries two houses and one under construction villa in bangalore were offered as collateral to borrow 12 million dollars to pay salaries in the recent report suggests that the company has also vacated its office in bangalore uh, for which it was paying 4 crore rupees monthly rent in a bid to cut losses the last nail of the coffin of course came today when a consortium of investors holding 30% stake in the company called that extraordinary general meeting with the aim of removing the founders uh, from the board of directors and this includes Bajju Ravindran himself his wife Divya Gokulnath who's a co-founder and his brother Riju Ravindran now we understand at that meeting when the meeting started at around 9 o'clock it was first met with a setback were users who were who were employees of the company bombarded the link and the call with we need by ju dear investors call by ju sir because by ju and his family had it, had uh, boycotted the meeting and they were not in that meeting this delayed the meeting for an hour attendees alleged that this was an attempt to ambush the meeting eventually they were all removed from the meeting but finally we understand by the end of the day that investors have voted to remove by ju and his family from the board of the company that they started of course this decision will uh, will be held for some time and will not be implemented as per the Karnataka high court until ravindra bajju has an opportunity to place before the court his argument but it makes us stop and ask what is happening with india startup remember first we talked about ptm now we're talking about bajju's if you talk to those who follow the startup industry very closely they'll tell you that vcs tend to follow other vcs money chases other money but it's expected that this money would have done enough due diligence on how these companies are run but really the indian market is attractive to money from overseas because it's massive it's fertile for disruption and so these very attractive startups that are growing quickly get a lot of money from vcs who then put pressure on them to increase their market substantially now that sort of massive amounts of money and the massive amounts of pressure to increase their market perhaps encourages these startup founders to cut corners to break rules and perhaps not follow exact due process but what we have to remember is these are real people real jobs real students real parents real money and this has a fallout then on other entrepreneurs across the country who'd have trouble raising funds because investors will now be bitten and shy this will have an impact on the entire startup sector